Thank you for watching another episode of Stallone's Reviews. Our mission is to help you decide what to love making next. Today we are reviewing the Sparble Marble Run by Wood Trick. We recommend this kit, however, it is not for beginners. In fact, Wood Trick rates it as its fifth level and most challenging builds. If your kit is anything like mine, you will need to do a bit of tuning. Tutorials and tips are at the end of the video. If you're about to start building, skip to that section first. I will pause the review briefly for tips created while I was building. Please hit the like button and subscribe to Stallone's Reviews. We're trying to reach 400 subscribers by the end of March. There are only 38 more to go. Yeehaw! Thank you for watching another episode of Stallone's Reviews. Uh, we are going back to the channel's roots a little bit here. I haven't done a wood uh, marble run in a while. It's been probably since December, maybe. Uh, this is a wood trick kit. It is super heavy. It's 558 pieces. I expect this guy to take me... Oh, probably at least a week to build. They have a lot of very big, very awesome looking marble runs, so I am excited to get in there. Uh, let's just give it a quick opening here, and we'll look through the stuff here with you real quick. It says it's the electric series, so I'm guessing it's motorized. And let's see what we got here. Fellows and ladies. Ladies and fellows. There we go. Okay, so we're looking at a tray. Yep. Oh, there we go. <clears throat> okay. It's a nice box. Let's pull it out there. Right, we've got a book style that opens uh, top to bottom. Uh, they do a very good job of giving you a uh, look at the part. Usually they do that when they're not necessarily trying to find part numbers is really difficult. They go ahead and they give it part a color there. So you know what you're looking for on the frame. And they uh really gives you a frame number it says 10 there. Let's take a look. 11, 6, 10. Yep, so they tell you the frame number to look on. And uh man, this is a huge build. <laughs> it's gonna take a while to go through this. Alright, that's the book. Let's we'll see here. Alright. Take that out. This is gonna be components it says on there. And there's one in the middle here. We'll put it down anyway. Uh, ah. Also says components. We'll open those up in a minute. Let's see here. Yeah, the parts are all numbered. Here's one tray. So it says 70 one. There's a B on it. Hmm. <laughs> and uh, 70.2. Maybe 70 is their. Um, so it said there's a seven number 70 right there. Maybe 70 is just like their creation number for the this whole kit. We 70 something. No. Let's go towards the bottom there. Yep. 70 uh, frame 11. Okay. There we go. And then. Uh, uh, very thick wood, so we're not dealing with really thin pieces, so that's good. Breakages should be uh, minimal. Um, oh, there's the... <laughs> they had a bunch of the marbles, a nice little pocket, so we'll give them a measure. They look at maybe about 10 millimeter there, but we'll measure them to give you exact measurement of the kit. And now let's take a look in the components boxes here real quick, see what we got here. Usually, hopefully, this is a battery box. What I usually hope for are everything you need to build the kit, like the sandpaper thingies or... Um, if you need um, uh, wax for the gearing, things like that, that's what I expect in these boxes. Um, so we got a battery box anyway. And then this one, let's see here, we got a motor. It may be just a motor, but we'll see here. Oh, no, we got wax in there. So we got a motor. Um, I'm going to use a big chunk of candle wax on this. I can tell already because wax looks kind of small. But uh, we do got ourselves a motor right there. And here's your wax and sandpaper. And apparently some rubber bands that you might need to make things work. All right. All right. Well, we'll get this built on camera and then give it a full review. On Stone and Screw's rock scale of hardness, with one being easy and ten being rock hard, I give this kit an eight out of ten, but in a good way. It's an excellent challenge. On the Stallone's Reviews Helping Hand score, with one being that it uses more man than machine, and ten being that it needs no help, in other words, a higher score is better, I give this kit an eight out of ten. I'm sure the battery compartment works this. Very neat. Flips it up there. Pull the batteries out. Change them as needed. Flip it back down. Put it up. It's important to make things work as follow as possible at each stage here, so let's just, oops, drop the marble. <laughs> 
and it works right down to there perfectly. Try it again, maybe catch more of it on camera there. Okay, so you gotta make sure things uh, operate good as you go along, um, as you're building. Because once you get all put together, if something's failing on you, it's usually so much more difficult to try to fix the situation. My situation here is, is as this ball drops down from the top, it gets stuck right here. And we're going to take care of that with this little uh, Dremel that I got. It's a cordless Dremel that I got on Timu. And it's pretty darn awesome, honestly. For very cheap, but we're just going to sand on the inside here. Increase the speed there a little bit. Now let's try it. Oh yeah. Way better. The spiral marble run used 11 millimeter size marbles. 16 of them were provided with seven marbles consumed in the build. And we recommend uh, really only operating with maybe seven to eight marbles for smoother operation. Okay, I spent quite a bit of time uh, uh, tuning this. So hopefully that it, everything will go up and down the way it's supposed to. Um, it, it pretty much does at this point. Um, but I had to file inside of here where, the, where this uh, chamber area is. So I filed both sides. I also waxed inside there. I also filed just the edges of the ramps because they were having a little bit of trouble, but I think it's just because things weren't going down all the way um, because they were getting stuck a little bit uh, with, like I said, where I filed. And I think it's working pretty good now, and I think it'll work good when it finally gets time for some action. Looking at the quality of the instructions, the instructions were stellar for a complex, massive build of this kind. They were in a 94-page book format. Most of the instructions throughout the build are almost one-to-one -one in size, and frequently they show you what the finished build should look like. They also appropriately tell you what parts to wax. There was a significant error on page 55 where the wrong part number was given, but the part is distinct and so it shouldn't cause too much confusion. The parts are made for thick frames, so breakage was a rare problem. Then it provided a number of spare parts on frame 11. I did have one break that did not have a replacement part, but it didn't affect the build. Also, Woodtrick states that they will send you up to two replacement parts should you need them, and they will send the entire frame they were cut from. Assembly was excellent, with the parts fitting very tightly in most cases. I used a touch of white glue on the rare part I felt went together too loosely. I needed a nylon hammer to join some of the elements that fit very tightly, in fact. Turning to operation, this marble run does best with only 7 to 8 marbles running simultaneously. It reduces the, do the double marble scenario in the second marble width, which can cause a problem. Starting at the marble gutter, the marbles drain into the queue that makes them wait their turn until they can be popped into a lifting arm. That lifts the marbles up to the second marble lift. The arm needed a couple of tweaks that I will detail in the tips part of this video. The second marble lift uses a camshaft system to elevate the marbles up to the top of the, the marble run. From here, there are three paths down. Paths 1 and 2 are activated by the third path when the marbles drop to a question mark shaped device that causes the li uh, lifting of a gate, which releases the marbles ready and waiting on paths 1 and 2. Path 1 is a long set of roller coaster hills wrapping the marble run with two hills and three very innovative 90 degree turns. There was a hitch here as the marbles can sometimes speed, have so much speed that they will leave the track on the second set of hills, requiring me to set up some stockade fences to keep the marbles on the path. Woodtrick designed a piece that fits onto the marble gutter uh, that captures the marbles and keeps them from flying out of, the, out of the marble gutter itself because of the speed. There was a hitch here as well as the device wasn't tall enough and would catch the marbles, so I had to ground away the top of the piece to free up the marbles. The second path is where this build gets its namesake. When the marble is released, it spirals down several feet of pathways. This is the first marble run I've done where the pathways were perfect and no marble ever stops because the pathway is too shallow. Great job, Woodtrick. Pathway number three has the marble handed off to the one cup to another until the marble drops down to the bottom and into the gutter. A problem here is really the fault of the second marble lift. The second marble lift can lift two marbles at a time. Sometimes two marbles make it to the third pathway and either leave the marble run or get stuck at the third pathway and clog things up. The longer the marble run goes, the less frequently this is a problem. Looking at what I liked, I like the size and challenge of this marble run. Its pathways are so successful that no marbles get stuck as they roll down to the gutter. The marble lifts, though needing some tuning, are very successful and reliably propel the marbles to the top of the run. 
The pathways are long and entertaining to watch the marbles make their way down. I especially like it when two marbles make it onto pathway 2 and chase each other down the spiral. Woodtrick has made me a huge fan of their builds. What need improvement? Two areas need improvement on my build. The first marble lift needed several elements of its shape sanded and weight added to ensure it landed with enough oomph to trigger the next marble release. The second area with a marble release mechanism on the top of the run also needed sanding of several areas and some clay added as a counterweight to make the device work more reliably. Can I do it again? You betcha! I have another wood trick marble run to build This that's even bigger, the Galaxy Marble Run. Is this a good first time build experience? No, this is definitely not the first marble run you start out with. Did you build a wood trick marble run? Which one? What do you think we should do next? Put your comments below. Please like and subscribe to see our latest videos. I hope this review helped you decide if you would love making your own Spiral Marble Run. If you're in a position to support me on Patreon, please click the link in the description. We have a camera that needs to be replaced for $3 a month. You can add free access to our videos and th three bucks to help you decide what to love making next. Okay, let's start the tutorial and tips. I apologize for stumbling and ums through this, but it's a lot to re-record re for the occasional slip up. I recommend the following to help you build this kit. I will include a list in the description and links to where to find them. A small file is crucial for any wood marble run kit. You may occasionally need white glue for parts that don't fit very tight or to glue some small pieces of wood down to tune the build. I have found that clay is beneficial in building a successful marble run. I used a small nylon hammer to help join some parts that were hard to fit together. I used wood skewers though you could just use some of the parts frames to make some stockade fences to keep marbles on the track. I used a hot glue gun to attach them. Graphite works great on the gears to help them turn smoothly. This was recommended to me from a member of the Stones Reviews community. I also used a Dremel tool to grind out areas of the build, which was a huge help in this, in this build especially. I got mine from Timu and it is great. Here were the areas that needed the most attention on my build. We'll start with the first marble lift, which required quite a bit of tuning. A wooden piece ensures the arm falls down the correct way, allowing the arm to bump the marble feed mechanism accurately. Okay, so uh, I was talking about making sure things work before you keep assembling. This is where I had to make a pause here for a little bit. This little piece here, this need to be round out and I had to, in order for the arm, which is right here, to come down all the way into the space. And then I had to add a little piece here so the arm would come down in the right place. It wants to land on top of this, so I had to push put this little piece to force it over and down. And then um, this wasn't letting the balls go um, into the thing very easily, so I fouled it down, but I did it a little bit too much, so I had a little clay to fix it. But now it is working. And they file away some wood from the outer side of the V. See page 72. This part could be improved by making it adjustable so you can just slide it in and out to uh, improve the arm's correct positioning. Secondly, I needed to add weight to the arm as it didn't hit the marble feed mechanism with enough force. I used clay for this. Thirdly, I had to file the inside of the marble basket on the arm so it would more reliably connect to the platform to release the marble. See page 72. Moving on to the marble gating mechanism at the top of the run, this had two areas that needed attention. First, there's a question mark shaped piece that needs a little bit of thickening along the area where the marble makes contact. See page 51. Secondly, the rails the marble rides on needed tapering on the inside of the forks to allow the marble to seat down farther. See page 50. Thirdly, I had to grind away the tip of the question mark to enable it to lift the back end of the piece farther. See page 51. Fourthly, I had to add clay to the tip of the question mark to add more counterbalance weight to that piece. Fifthly, on the bottom end of the piece where the rod of the marble gate slides into the hole on the question mark piece, I had to file the inside of the hole to make it smooth and then I had to file the rod until it was round so it wouldn't get snagged during its action. See pages 51 and 92. Other areas to improve. Number one, the marble gutter needed four little pieces of wood to help direct the marbles once they entered the gutter. Number two, two pieces of clay help reduce the chances of marbles getting stuck in locations in the gutter. Number three, there is a piece wood trick designed in the gutter to catch the marbles coming at high speed from the first pathway. I had to sand the top or the roof of this piece as it hung too low and just stopped the marbles entirely. Number four, I had high hot glued stockade fences uh, around the second and final curves on the first marble path as the marbles tend to leave the system in those areas. Number five, I sanded any bearing surface to reduce friction when the parts are joined, like on page 62. Number six, on page 55, when you are making the six marble cups, sand down the edges until uh, round to reduce the friction when the marble tumbles down into them. Uh, uh, number seven, page 70, on the second marble lift, I file the edges of the lifting bodies slightly to give them a little better opportunity to accept an incoming marble. 
Uh, number eight, page 71, a couple of tips on this page. Make sure to wax the insides of the big ear where it will rub up against anything. Make sure to wax the teeth or add graphite to the air gears to help them rotate smoothly with one another. I did both, making for a very smooth operation. For part 97, I followed the piece down that, that the arm will be rotating with as the arm goes up and down. The thing you have to know about these um, cam style uh, marble lifts is you have to really wax the top of these really good. They have to be very smooth as well. And you also want to wax inside the little keepers there. And this was the this is the best one of these I've put together. They put these very nice uh, keepers in there to make sure the cans would stay in place. The first one I did of these, these were just supposed to be stay hope just stay in place. Ended up having to glue them there. But these had Woodtrick did a very good job of designing these so that they would stay put. And then the thing you got to uh, watch for is these little guides here. You have to make sure that these are nice and wide. So I actually filed in them in a little wider and then put in a, a nice amount of wax in there to make sure that they stayed where they would move very nicely. Nice and smooth. Otherwise, if they stick, your barbells go nowhere. And um, make sure inside here to wax the sides of these lifts so again so they and, and sand these nice and smooth to make sure there's nothing no rough edges that are going to bind these because if it, they can just get stuck in place and then again the marbles go nowhere so sand in here make sure these are nice and smooth and put some wax on them i'm going to show you from this angle the amount of work i did here on this little guy here's their clay here's the amount, little build up i made there and then there's the edges I filed down so that it would rise up higher. And there you can see where I I filed. This was square. I filed it to was round. And then again, I waxed inside here and filed in there so it was very smooth. So it has the best chance of moving up nice and high when a marble hits it. And then they also made this nice little <laughs> turning sign, which is kind of a gee whiz thing. It doesn't turn by any kind of locomotion. You have to do it yourself, but it does look kind of cool. If you made it this far, thank you very much for watching. I finally got around to writing an outro to give you plenty of time to hit those like and subscribe buttons. Thanks again to those of you who have already subscribed. And one of you will have the good luck to be my first paid tier patron on Patreon. If you subscribe today for $3 a month, you get access to my videos without having to watch ads. Thank you in advance.